thank you so much. Uh, my name is Alex Tolgos, uh, the governor of uh, the County of Champions, uh, Elgeo Marakwet County. Uh, this is the home of uh, athletes and uh, it's one of the unique counties in this country. We, we are proud to have uh, so many uh, things like uh, the beauty of Elgeo Marakwet. I, I'm sure it's not uh, comparable to any other county in this country and we are proud of that and uh, we are happy that today we are hosting the Equity Week, have people from other counties visiting our county so that we can share our experiences and even more importantly uh, we like visitors coming so that they can go back and share what they've seen in Elgeo Marakwet. It's another way of marketing our county. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Governor, thank you very much for talking to us. And mm -hmm. one of the things you have picked from your presentation this morning mm -hmm. is that El Geo Marakwet has really made st strides in mm -hmm. terms of uh, equitable distribution of resources amongst mm -hmm. its uh, po populace. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us how you've been able to achieve this? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as you are aware, when we started the county governments in 2013, uh, we try so many ways of uh, uh, trying to distribute our resources to reach every uh, corner of the county. We have 20 wards and we realized uh, we did a lot of mistakes uh, during the first financial year and that prompted uh, the, the, the discussion uh, within the county assembly and the county executive. And uh, uh, we came up with uh, an equitable development act which is an act that uh, assists the county to uh, try and ensure that uh, uh, resources reach every corner of the county and also uh, uh, trying to look at the uh, other aspects because uh, all, uh, within the county, the 20 wards, they are not equal. There are other counties, which, uh, other wards which uh, uh, have developed more than the others. There are other uh, uh, climatic conditions like uh, we have uh, uh, three levels in Elgeo Marakwet. We have uh, islands, which is more, uh, they receive uh, adequate rainfall throughout the year. Uh, we have Anangin Valley, which uh, receive a moderate uh, rainfall, and the lower valley, which sometimes it's a semi-arid area. So we realize that uh, uh, treating these uh, wards equally uh, might not uh, bring that uh, uh, development or even uh, might not make our people uh, appreciate uh, uh, what devolution is. And uh, I think through the act we've learned a lot of things. And uh, one of the things that has really come out of, uh, out of this act is the issue of uh, public participation, where we decided that because our resources are limited and uh, we cannot do all the, uh, the projects uh, proposed in our CIGP, we decided that let the people decide let them, let's give them the money, then they can sit down and see how they can share this money and do their projects. And uh, in 2015, when we started implementing this act, we realized that there were a lot of challenges because uh, the members of the public were fighting over these resources. But later on, they've learned uh, uh, through uh, the years we've implemented the uh, Equity Development Act, and they've realized that uh, counties are there to stay, uh, that's the first thing, and that every Every other time, uh, they, uh, every financial year, they get money to uh, allocate to projects. So uh, even in some areas, we've seen members of public uh, uh, coming together and even uh, some areas uh, deciding to forego their allocation so that one area can, can have a meaningful development. And to us, I think that has been a very uh, good achievement. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, continually uh, 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 look at this act and even see where areas where we need to do uh, amendments. And uh, I'm happy that we are having this uh, discussion, the Equity Week, uh, and uh, we are happy there are a number of uh, other counties who have come to uh, participate in this event. And ours is to uh, have a look at what other counties are doing, because we know maybe we might have uh, uh, caught an in right uh, with the act, but there are areas which we are not doing well and we want to share, uh, to get experiences from other counties so that we can uh, borrow the uh, best practices and, 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 and generally have a discussion about the, uh, uh, the whole issue of uh, location of resources and, uh, and, and ensuring that uh, our people are happy with uh, the way we do our development. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor. One of the things that comes out when you are talking about distribution of resources mm -hmm. is that very Different sectors. In the mm -hmm. what were the sectors that were very challenging for the county government to pursue? 
Uh, thank you so much. Uh, there are a number of uh, areas which uh, we think that we we, uh, we faced a lot of challenges and we still have those challenges. And um, a good example is the issue of roads. Uh, you realize that uh, when you are distributing resources, you cannot just uh, 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 focus on one area and say that maybe you want to distribute uh, resources to do roads in that area because roads um, uh, cut across uh, the, uh, the wards and, and even uh, across other counties. And sometimes you might have a very nice road maybe within a ward but moving out of that ward you realize that there are challenges uh, along the way and uh, we've been trying to uh, uh, encourage our people that as we even uh, look at uh, sharing uh, resources in, in our wards we must also have a, a greater picture of the whole county where um, uh, and that's uh, where the uh, flagship projects come in because the first challenge was uh, when we try to allocate more money to flagship projects other people uh, for example when you're in a place like Tambachi and you want to do a project, maybe somebody who is in um, at the farthest end of, uh, of the county, uh, Metke Ward, might not realize the importance of uh, developing a project in this area because they think that they might not uh, uh, be in contact with that uh, uh, project that has been done. But again, they've come to realize because there are other things like uh, when we are doing, uh, like we have a national reserve, which is uh, in uh, uh, within Kayo North sub county, uh, Tambach and Emso Ward, and you realize we were telling them that this is a uh, revenue uh, earner for the county, and once the re uh, revenue comes, they go to one basket. So that person who is in uh, Kabiego Ward, which is uh, the farthest ward in, on the other side of Marakwe, will. Uh, reap the benefits maybe after uh, this uh, uh, project has, has been actualized and we start collecting revenue. So I think um, uh, those are some of the challenges that we've been facing but uh, I'm happy that the, the members of public are slowly understanding and even uh, uh, visualizing the whole uh, 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 thing about the resource allocation and even uh, uh, how the challenges that we're having in, uh, as a county. And being a county that receives uh, uh, the least uh, uh, allocation from uh, uh, CRA, I think it has been hard for us because uh, when we were campaigning for this uh, new constitution, the expectation of our people was raised in such a way that uh, uh, the members of public knew that uh, with devolution all their problems will be sorted once and for all. And again, uh, with uh, limited resources, we were not able to even uh, meet a target. And a good example is the issue of uh, uh, when we are doing our CIDP. Uh, members of public came out, they proposed uh, all kinds of projects that they wanted to be actualized in five years. And we realized at the end of the exercise that we needed not less than 38 billion to actualize all the projects. And whereas we only had about 1 billion uh, to do development per financial year, meaning in five years, 5 billion. So the deficit of 33 billion, explaining that was not an easy task, but involving the members of public to participate in uh, uh, budget making process uh, made them understand. And even now, uh, the narrative has changed. Uh, whenever we have uh, public functions, you, uh, the statements that come from the members of public is that they are requesting CRA to look at the formula and even consider El Geo Maracuet in other uh, things like uh, equalization funds so that we can breathe the cup uh, from what we receive and uh, what, we, uh, what we collect and uh, what is needed in development. Right. Thank you very much, Sandra. Just as we finalize, the last thing we really want to know is what uh, lesson would you want the other county governments to take away from today's event of the equity week about distribution, distribution of their resources equitably amongst the public? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, one lesson that uh, we'd want uh, me, uh, uh, other counties to uh, take away from El Geo Maracuet is one, uh, we might not say that we want them to maybe go and, implement, uh, and develop um, an act like equitable, but what we are saying is that uh, 
we want them to, uh, uh, if they are not engaging their members of public in, in, in budget making process, they need to strengthen uh, public participation because it's through public participation. Once the people understand what they have and what they are supposed to do, it will be very easy for the leaders and, and also the county staff to, uh, uh, to work on the budget that they have.